Hey, so welcome back for another video. Today I'm gonna be sharing with you five essential applications that boost my productivity as a software engineer. But first, I need to get to the office. First up, I want to talk about the new calendar which I've been trying out, Notion Calendar. My calendar and mail are usually one of the first things that I open up when I'm starting my day. So really, it works and is laid out just like all the other calendars apps, as you would expect. But I really like the overall design and the emphasis on keyboard shortcuts, allowing you to work faster and more efficiently. And there's the command palette if you prefer to just type it out. Another feature I've been really liking as well is the quick availability sharing, which I used to rely on a whole other app just for that. So you can easily block time from your week and share your availability with anyone using the live link. For a while now, I've been keeping a work log for all my weekly tasks and I take notes on Notion during our meetings, such as standups and epics. So having my notes accessible right from my calendar it's nice because I can quickly reference any past discussions or decisions and open them up straight from my calendar. I've also found Notion Calendar really useful now that I have a tighter schedule with things like content creation because I can add my content management databases and see my projects and tasks all from one calendar. Next up, I have Raycast and this app has really become an essential part of my daily usage. And I couldn't imagine using my computer without something like this now. And conveniently, Raycast is sponsoring today's video, which looks pretty simple, but there's quite a bit to unpack here. But regardless, it truly is a productivity app that I use daily and I'm happy to feature it. The most important thing for me is that it removes the need for context switching. While I'm doing focused coding work, I can quickly search for files or start an app or run system commands without wasting time switching to the different applications. Also, something that I found super convenient is the my schedule command, where I can quickly see and launch events or meetings. Then we have the awesome window management because as you may know, the default window management on Mac is very lacking. These are the only three options that you get. With the Raycast, you can easily configure your screen layout however you prefer. 
but the best part is that all of these are configurable to whatever hotkeys you want. But really, the star for me is Raycast AI, which makes Raycast Pro so worth it. Really quick, there are currently three different approaches to using Raycast AI. Number one is Quick AI for whenever you have a one-off question or want to quickly search something online without bloated results. Number two is AI Chat, which is more like if you need to keep a conversation going. See, the thing with programming is that there's many different approaches to building some feature. So this has been super handy for me to build out something throughout my workday. The third and last way to use AI with Raycast are AI commands, which works with already existing text. For example, here you can be composing an email and you can use AI commands to modify that email text. The last highlight is the Raycast store, which has tons of cool extensions created by other people. Usually when I'm writing code, I have a tab open for developer docs, but these extensions such as Tailwind, Radix UI, and Vercel allows me to quickly search through docs and references. Overall, I really love that they're constantly releasing new updates to Raycast, which allows me to do so much with just one app. Oh, and the Raycast team did hook it up. So I'll be giving away 15 free codes to try out Raycast Pro for free for a whole month. Be sure to find those down in the description. So yeah, go check out Raycast if you really want to boost your productivity. And of course, thanks to the Raycast team for sponsoring today's video. So typically after checking my calendar and setting up my computer, the next thing I do is to check my tasks for our ongoing development. That's where Linear comes in. Linear is a lot more clutter free than many of the other project management tools which I've used and it actually makes you want to use it while other ones I would try to avoid. Now if you're not already familiar with project management tools, they're pretty much just a way to help you organize the hundreds of tasks that your team has. I love how simple but powerful Linear can be. Not only is the app very fast to use and very performant, but you can work faster and more efficiently. The navigation and keyboard focus design just makes it more enjoyable and fast to work. But what's most interesting to me from Linear is its method for project management, which focuses on cycles of development instead of sprints, where cycles are meant to be more nimble and more flexible with no specific release at the end of it. Overall, it feels like such a polished app. Next up is Warp. Taking the base Mac terminal to a whole new level, I've noticed that while the default Mac apps may suffice, their functionality can sometimes feel lackluster, especially for those who enjoy tinkering customization. Uh, really quick, I thought I would mention that both Warp and Raycast were actually recommended to me by you guys down in the comments. Warp is Rust based, so it feels very fast to use. So Warp also offers the command palette, which is something I've been noticing a lot more with a lot of applications. On the bad side, with so many apps doing this now, sometimes I forget which shortcut is for which app. Anyways, the standout feature is how every submitted command is its own block, so it's easier to navigate up and down, and every block has an action menu. Sometimes lengthy console commands, such as running a server, can be easily forgotten, but Warp solves this so simple with sticky headers for each command. In the past, features like auto completion and suggestion and even git support were things that I would have to manually install myself with plugins like Parallel 10k or oh My ZSH. so having them integrated into Warp by default is super convenient. And on top of all of this, Warp AI is available for free with a refreshing limit. I use it all the time whenever I need a specific command and don't want to search on Google. And of course, you can also split your windows however you like. So yeah, go give Warp a try. I think it's a really invaluable app for developers looking to enhance their default terminal. Lastly, I wanted to show Zed, which admittedly is a newer app for me, but one that seems very promising. and. I have noticed lots of hype around it too. 
It's supposed to be very fast as it's also Rust based and works natively instead of being an Electron app. Not only is the app itself very fast, but Zed also allows you to work much faster. Similarly with the other apps, you can work quicker with searchable commands, the well-known BS code bindings, and with Vim support. That's if you can learn how to use Vim. Ultimately, their goal is to build a super intelligent pair programmer and help you code faster. So that's why it supports AI out of the box and GitHub Copilot. And I know you can't see it, but scrolling on Z also feels buttery smooth here on the ProMotion display. Because interestingly, Z rasterizes the entire window on your GPU. It's built just like a 3D video game. Also, Z has some cool collaboration features where you can work on the same code in real time. And there are channels where you can communicate with voice or text, which reminds me a lot of Discord. So yeah, overall this editor seems very promising and I'm really looking forward to trying it out more this year, but would like to get a couple more features like built-in version control and debugging before fully adopting it.